Hi, hello, I'm Sam Harris and I read, review and discuss fantasy and science fiction books. Today we are talking about, talking about? We're reviewing The Martian by Andy Weir. So I read this a couple of weeks ago now, uh, but uh, I only do one review a week so I've finally gotten around to it. Now um, let me talk you guys through kind of what The Martian is about. Then I will give some opinions in terms of characters and storytelling and then we'll kind of go through my like major problem with the book and a uh, comparison to the movie which a lot of you, a lot more of you may have seen the movie than read the book because the movie was insanely popular and I had seen the movie first before I watched the book. So this is the third Andy Weir book that I've read, but this was actually the first one that was published. So the he published The Martian uh, as like a serial online on his website because no publisher would buy it. Um, and it was so massively popular that publishers picked it up uh, once it was finished and it, you know, it, was, it had finished playing out online. One of the interesting things about this book is that it's an epistolary novel, um, which you don't get many of nowadays. Now, epistolary novel means that it is a story told in other documents. So this could be, I mean, the most famous one is probably Dracula by Bram Stoker. Um, Dracula is made up of things like diary entries, letters, postcards, you know, all that sort of thing. And The Martian is primarily made up of Mark Watney's, uh, like, Captain's Log entries. Um, so what is The Martian about? Essentially, Mark Watney is a botanist and engineer who is part of the, I believe, third mission to Mars. Or, yeah, I think third. He's part of the third mission to Mars. And the idea behind this mission is that they will go to Mars, live there for a few weeks, and then fly home. Now, uh, there is an unfortunate accident on Mars, and uh, the rest of the team is forced to abandon the Martian camp, and they believe Mark is dead, so they leave him behind. Now, what happens is Watney then looks and goes like, right, what food have I got? What resources have I got? What can I do? What can I make? How can I, you know, get in touch with home? Because the, the big problem that he has is that his, uh, the, the satellite dish that they use to communicate from the Mars base to Earth relied on the uh, ship that the team took up into space. And also, I believe the satellite dish basically breaks off and is destroyed in the accident. So Watney is out of contact of Earth and he's just kind of trying to survive. There's another scheduled Mars mission um, in like three or four years or something. Is it three or four years? There is another scheduled Mars mission coming and he's like, well, let's see if I can survive until then. And he's a botanist, so he's able to grow his own potatoes. He's also uh, out of um, the potatoes that they had there. Um, he's also, as, as I said before, he's an engineer. So he's able to kind of work things out, fix things, build things. And um, the most exciting part of Watney's story is always when he is being like ingenious, when he's working something out, when he's building something. Um, I really, really enjoyed that section or that part of his story. Um, my favourite bits of the book, however, were actually the um, chapters that were not the logs. So every few chapters you get like a break-in chapter, which is written in a traditional prose style and is um, like the, uh, the NASA headquarters team who are initially um, unaware that he's alive but then once they find out that he's alive the whole of their job then becomes to get him home. We then also break into other stories with the crew that left him behind um, 
and it's it's just those sections were really really good and i really like them in in kind of preference to the original to the original to the um logs style chapters and i'll tell you why which is my major problem with the book overall so lots of really cool thrilling dangerous things happen to mark watney but they don't happen while you're reading they've all happened and then he'll come to you to read a log and he'll you know he's doing it in an interesting way but the whole process not process the whole way that the story is told takes all the drama out of it like you don't know if he's going to escape mars it's pretty obvious he's going to escape mars but you don't know um and uh it, it felt to me the whole time that he was going to escape How, there was no like thing in the back of my mind going well maybe he dies on mars um because that just didn't feel like the kind of book that andy weir was writing but the big issue for me is that he'll be like you know there'll be a one chapter will be like and then i fixed this cool thing and i'm i'm really happy with it i've made a cool device and then the next chapter will be like fuck 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 i've done an explosion but like you already know he survived you already know like he often tells you in the chapter he's like oh nothing was really damaged or this thing was damaged but i can probably repair it and i think that removing all the tension out of the story is is just something that uh kind of annoyed me throughout going through so it wasn't like i was going like oh this is boring it was it was always entertaining but I felt like it could have been way more entertaining if the stories from what the, the you know the chapters from Watney's POV, we were reading them, you know, we were reading about events happening. We weren't reading Watney tell us what events had happened. So that's like my main and major criticism. So I think that uh, I ended up rating the book a three out of five which I think is pretty blasphemous for how people love The Martian. Um, but for me, it could have been a four if we had seen these events happening in real time, you know? Even, you know, a lot of stories are told um, in, like, the past, you know? Like, they did this, they saw this, you know? But um, you can still make that incredibly exciting. Because that, that's how most stories are told, most books. Um, past tense that's what I was thinking of it's all in the past tense um, and one of the big things with The Martian is that everything's in the past tense but it's been told by somebody who has survived the event that is taking place whereas it's much more interesting and in that you feel more peril if things are you know being described to you as they happen almost or it's difficult it's, it's like if the stories had not been like explicitly logs and he had just been retelling his story it would have felt completely different to me and this is one of the reasons why i believe the movie is actually better than the book so in the movie things happen to mark watney in media res you you're with mark you are mark as you watch him uh, watch these horrible things happen to him you know when a certain thing explodes and like traps him outside the base or when he's you know sleeping overnight in the mars not the mars the um rover like all of that stuff you get to see it happen and that for me makes that movie a lot more tense and a lot more interesting and you know how close he is to death at all times Whereas, you know, you're reading the book and you're like, well, I've got, got half a book left and he's not died yet. So it's, it's really hard. I felt like the tension from his chapters was completely gone. Whereas the tension from the, uh, the stuff that was told uh, in a more traditional novel format. So the stuff on Earth would be like, oh, are they going to find him? Are they going to, you know, are they going to work out what he's doing? And like there was loads more tension and, and in those chapters, and I found that more entertaining. The biggest plus point, like I said, is the um, science and the fun 
uh, engineering stuff. So like, I'm not a scientist. I, I have a creative writing degree. Um, I'm not particularly scientifically minded, but I really enjoyed all the science because the way that Weir explains it makes it seem very relatable. So um, if you told me that Andy Weir was like an engineering teacher or like a science teacher, I would 100% believe you because it feels like somebody is able to explain the scientific concepts and the ideas. And there was never a part where I'm reading it and going like, oh, I should Google that. I'm not sure I understand it. Whereas in, in this book, I, I understood the whole thing and I really enjoyed reading it. I really liked the way that, um, really liked the way that Weir um, told the story and he included the science and things like that in the story. So overall, like I said, this ended up being a three star read for me. Um, it didn't have any significant problems to the point where I was like, mm, maybe I should DNF this. Um, however, I definitely did not enjoy it as much as everyone else. I really liked um, the emotional insight that we got by Mark Watney's sections being his logs. I did really enjoy that. Um, and uh, the emotion in the book was still very strong. But like I was saying, that the tension was so weak because nothing happens, you know, nothing happens to Mark. We hear about it after it has happened. And that, for me, kind of ruined the story. Um, now, comparing it to the other Andy Weir books, because I've now read all three. So I read Project Hail Mary uh, a couple of years ago, like not long after it came out. Uh, and I listened to that one via Audible. Um, I do think that is the way to, to listen to that one. And in fact, I'd be, I'd be tempted to say that the audiobook is the way to listen to Andy Weir's books. Um, they do translate incredibly well to audio. Artemis specifically loved the audio experience for that one. Actually, Artemis and Hail Mary, I loved the audio experience for that one. Um, Artemis the, it is read by Rosario Dawson. And while she might not be the world's greatest person, I believe she got semi-cancelled a few years ago and then came back from the brink. Um, I did really enjoy the narration of Artemis. Um, and I felt that she was a really good fit for the character. Um, and uh, yeah, the same for Pale Mary, to be honest. Um, and I would recommend both. I read most of The Martian via uh, my Broken Binding book, which is up on the shelf over there. Um, but, uh, uh, and unfortunately, my bookshelf is blocked by loads of boxes and baby stuff. However, I really enjoyed The Martian. Um, I did not, as I said, enjoy it as much as the other two. Artemis ended up being my favourite because it just had more characters. And I think Weir is actually a pretty good character writer and he writes these interesting characters. Um, but I would like to see... Uh, I'd like to see another mo book... I say movie. I'd like to see another book in the style of Artemis where he's got lots of characters, but with the focus on science that he gives us in... Uh, like fun science, pop science, that he gives us in um, The Martian and Hail Mary. I think if he's able to nail all of the aspects, uh, then his fourth book could be genuinely the best one yet. I think his character writing across all three has been solid, but the amount of characters we get in Artemis uh, made it some of the uh, much more interesting. Um, because we get all these different perspectives and these different kinds of people, whereas um, the Martian is mostly very similar people. They're all science people, um, and uh, Project Hail Mary is obviously its own different beast, which I, I won't spoil, but uh, you should definitely read. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the movie version of Project Hail Mary. I think uh, Ryan Gosling is going to be playing the main character, so that could be really fun. Um, yeah. They should have made a movie of Artemis too. Don't know whether it ever got optioned. I'll have to look it up. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Um, if you have a completely different opinion to mine, I would love to hear about it. Why don't you drop down into the comments and let me know why I'm so wrong or so right. 
um, or just your thoughts on the book. And of course, if you've liked this video, please give it a like. And finally, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I review a, a fantasy or sci-fi book every single week. And then I follow that up with loads of other fun, different types of videos. So if you'd like to subscribe, I would love to have you as a member of the community. Thanks so much. And I'll speak to you tomorrow.